Good day, everyone, and welcome to the Bibbleholics channel. Today's topic is about the dangers of these red pill influencers and why Christians shouldn't support them. To start, I believe in some of what they say, like men should be masculine, men should work hard, men should improve themselves, all that, that's great. Where I find issue are in different matters, mainly three things which I will cover in this video. Just as a warning, there will be topics discussed and language used which are vulgar and disgusting. If you want to maintain innocence or not listen to vulgar topics like sex, hedonism, and other topics like that, click off this video. Many of these influencers like to promote having sex with many women before you get married in order to make sure that you can please your wife so she won't cheat on you. You know what women want? Women want good dick. And if you fuck them properly, mm. they don't want anything else. If your woman comes along and goes, I'm not content and I feel like I need to be an actress again. Do you know what that really means? You're not fucking me right. There are many problems with this philosophy. The most obvious problem is that sex before marriage is a sin and we shouldn't be engaging in such grave sin. Not only does sex before marriage take a toll on your mind since you enter a black hole of hedonism, but it also reduces your chances for having a happy marriage. Pearl from Just Pearly Things brought this up when talking about why women shouldn't be promiscuous. And the other issue is once you've had five partners as a chick, um, you, your chance of a happy marriage drops to 20, 30 percent. So Pearl was right that women who have sex before marriage are less likely to have a happy marriage, but she left out something very important. The statistic she used was also applied to men, but she only showed how it related to women. She manipulated the statistics to fit her worldview more. Men are just as affected by premarital sex as women are, and for the exact same reasons. Many red pill influencers say that promiscuity leads to women not being able to have sex with their husband because someone before him was better at having sex, and therefore that she cheats. But the problem with this reasoning is that they apply this claim only to women and think that men aren't affected by this. It's preposterous to think that only women are affected by premarital sex. Men will have the exact same issue, and since men naturally like variety, I would go as far to say that men would be more likely to cheat due to having premarital sex than women. It gets even worse because these influencers say that men cheating is justified, and here are some clips to prove that. My mom was upset because we split up and my dad cheated and my sister stopped talking to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when my sister stopped talking to my dad, me and my brother obviously still spoke to him. And he said, boys, when you're older, you'll, you'll understand. Mm. And I'm, now I'm older, I understand. Yeah, yeah. He, he fucked a girl, so. Yeah. So. Yeah. And this is what I mean by cheated. This whole idea of cheated to me is, it's, it's, it's propagated by obviously Western society. It's propagated by the, the powerful females. This idea that no man should ever dare fuck anyone but them. And to me, it's asinine. I have, I have a relationship. I've been in a relationship for six years. Mm. I fuck anything that moves. She knows I do it. Yeah. And she stays with me anyway. Yeah. And, and the reality is because I've never hidden it. I've never lied about it. Yeah. It's, not, it's her choice. She can leave if she wants to leave. Not only is it bogus that only men can cheat, since nobody should, but the justifications why are even more insane. They say that because men crave variety, it's justified. That's antithetical to the Christian message of denying your flesh. They also justify that because men can impregnate multiple women, while a woman can only be impregnated by one man, it's justified. This is another bogus claim since, while true, it doesn't change the fact that polygamy is against God's will. They also like to use David and Solomon having multiple wives to justify polygamy, which is actually hilarious. They don't actually know anything about what the Bible teaches, since it doesn't teach us that David and Solomon are perfect moral figures. In fact, David and Solomon fell into grave sin, despite being God's anointed servants. While David and Solomon did have multiple wives, Jesus later condemns polygamy in Matthew 19 verses 1 through 11, specifically Matthew 19 verse 9. While Jesus condemns divorce and remarriage, this is implying a monogamous culture since Jesus includes marrying another woman. Plus, every polygamous person in the Bible falls into great sin. We already mentioned David and Solomon, how David fell to Bathsheba and Solomon fell to idol worship. But Lamech is another polyamorous character who ends up committing the second murder in the Bible. It's also fitting that this man was a descendant of Cain. Plus, Genesis 2 verses 23 to 24 heavily imply that one woman is enough to complete a man. It also helps to know that Adam was never given a second woman to marry, 
only Eve. However, God in the Old Testament does allow for things he doesn't like sometimes, like Israel having a monarchy or David's wives. That doesn't mean God sanctions these things, but in specific circumstances, certain measures may be taken. This almost never applies to us though, since we live under a perfect moral law under the new covenant. The biggest thing that these red pill influencers miss is what marriage actually is and the whole reason for it. Marriage isn't just a next step in your relationship. Marriage is a sanctification of a relationship by God, where the man and the woman's flesh become one. Marriage has its own type of love that no other relationship has. Loving the other person as yourself. Before marriage, the flesh isn't one, and therefore the partners don't enjoy the love that comes with that flesh unity. They yet love their partner with a love that's more like a special person type love. After marriage, you love your partner as yourself. When you love that person, having sex isn't about how they look, how they act, or anything physical. Having sex inside marriage is all about love, uniting the two fleshes, and trusting that person to raise children with you. It's not the service level sex that these red pillars promote. Sex is evil when it's separated from its love and done for mere pleasure or lust. God intended sex to only happen inside marriage, and we should keep it that way out of our love for him. I understand that these people criticize women for valid reasons. I agree that OnlyFans models are doing a morally reprehensible act. I agree that promiscuous women are destroying themselves and the men they interact with sexually, although promiscuous men have the same issue. I agree that feminism has destroyed the western world, however the way that these influencers criticize these women is horrible. These people dehumanize the women and treat them like garbage rather than try to help them. Yes, okay, and I just said it wasn't good to call people France, France, be quiet for two seconds. Do you no, not understand? That's just not the same. France, you're France, make, France. You want to make me look dumb, but I'm no, just telling you. No, you're doing that already. You're doing that already. You're doing that already. You're doing that already. That's just not the same. It, look, okay. a broke woman can still find a rich man if she's pretty. I don't want that. I want to be independent. I'm not talking about you. And, but <laughs> yes. Yo. Yo, this girl's retarded, bro. And, no. <laughs> what? The, what? <gasps> Holy shit. Yo, my head hurts. Yo. No. no. What? Okay. Thank and God, and a bro guy no. can find the. They even say things that would make it hopeless for women if they actually wanted to change. So they're creating hateful women. The worst part is that their fans love this disrespect. The main reason why is because these men are angry at women for a multitude of reasons. Some of these reasons include, but aren't limited to, rejection, mental games, loneliness, some women having very excessive standards, and feminism destroying men and women. While it's understandable to feel pain from these things, it's not understandable to disrespect the women that have done these things. Instead, it's our duty to pray for them and to forgive them. Their fans eat this disrespectful content up because in their mind, these women had it coming. Their rationale is, I felt pain from women, so I want these women to feel pain. This is sad, not only because these men are in so much pain that they want to inflict it on others, but this rationale will lead to many abusive boyfriends if these dudes even get girlfriends. It's reprehensible for these influencers to keep on levying this disrespect because not only are they sinning by talking down to these women, but they know their fan base loves the disrespect, so they keep on dehumanizing people and make money off it. Then their fans will replicate this behavior, which will not only make them feel even more pain, causing them to go back and watch more of these videos, but it will also create more tension between men and women, causing women to be more radicalized into feminism, men to be more radicalized into misogyny, and then it will be a vicious cycle of men going to red pillars and women going to feminists for information, then being more radicalized, then sowing more hate. Our goal as Christians is to ensure that hate gets vanquished. Romans chapter 16 verse 17 says, I urge you brothers and sisters to keep an eye on those who cause dissensions and offenses. In opposition to the teachings that you have learned, avoid them. 
And James chapter 4 verse 11 tells us, Do not speak evil against one another. Brothers and sisters, whoever speaks evil against another or judges another, speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. God is the only judge, and we must spread love. We must not sow hate or discord among the two genders. We should advocate that men and women are the perfect complement to each other, that we're made for each other, and that we should love each other and respect each other because we have our strengths and weaknesses. We aren't some polar opposite beings. We're complementary beings. And too few people today realize that because of these red pillars and these feminists. The final thing I want to touch on is their fixation with materialism. Andrew Tate is the best example of this, as he always talks about owning Bugattis and massive houses and all that stuff. Now, the Bible has no problem with building up wealth, so long as it doesn't consume you and you're also using your money virtuously. Spending your money on expensive food occasionally or buying yourself a new car every few years is not bad. Owning excessive amounts of cars, owning massive swaths of property, and hoarding money is greedy. If you have enough money to buy a Bugatti with no second thought, you should be donating more to charity. There's no reason to live in luxury with massive surplus when there are people around the world suffering in poverty. Matthew 19 verse 24 tells us that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. This is because most rich people are greedy. Not all of them, but most of them. They are hoarding their money when they don't need to. They're not in debt. They're not in poverty, and they have so much money because they're not virtuous. If you have more than $30 million, realistically, you would never have to work in your whole life assuming you didn't blow your money on hyper expensive things. Let's say you lived to 80 years old. If you had $30 million the day you were born, you could spend $1,000 a day of your life, and you would still nearly have $800,000 at your deathbed. But let's be real here. People tend to make their money in their late 20s and early 30s, according to these red pillars. Let's just say you started 30 years old with $10 million. If you spent $500 a day, you would have $875,000 at your deathbed. Normal people don't need that much money. $500 a day is a lot for most people, as the average American spends $165 every day. And guess what? Compared to the rest of the world, that's a lot. According to Pew Research, roughly 71% of the world lives under $10 every day. Obviously, the cost of living will be lower in the more impoverished countries, but my point still stands. I'm not saying you have to live in poverty to not be greedy, but keep in perspective how much you're spending on yourself and how much you could be spending on others. Mark 12 verses 41 through 44 say, he, who is Jesus, sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Greedy people will always justify vast wealth because they want to be above people and have the finest thing the world can offer. I tell you this, the finest things in the world are a relationship with God and knowledge and wisdom of the kingdom of heaven. Supercars, mansions, penthouses, watches, and other materialistic things will perish just like you. You don't take those things in the afterlife. What you take is your soul and God's grace. Did you love God enough that you loved other people? Did you love those people enough to sacrifice some luxury in order for them to have another meal, buy a home, or have access to water? Did you love yourself more than others and hoard your possessions so you could have superficial luxuries in life? Oh, look at my cars, my houses, my personal assistants, or my many women. No. How about you look at the people who are starving in impoverished regions of the world? How about you look at the people you exploit for money? These webcam businesses where you knowingly exploited incels? So what I did is I unplugged their keyboards and plugged a new one in from me behind the screen. So the chicks would sit there and hit a keyboard that wasn't plugged in. And me and my brother, and eventually some staff I trained, would do all the talking. 
the girls were just pure, just famoosers, just laughing and doing this, the titties out, and they were talking to fucking ice cold hustlers. We were taking their money, all of it. And they they come and say, <laughs> what kind of, bro, all of it. We were fucking milking them dry. Women haven't got a clue how to famoose a dude. They don't have, because they rely on their looks. They don't have any of the intellect. They have no game, nothing. <laughs> they're some, though, they're, they're nothing. They're some. Nah, you get, you get a man, you get a man with game and give him a female's body, a female avatar, we he will fuck a guy up. I had these guys selling their houses, life savings, loans, all of it to me. Give me it all. So like, and it's, it's basic shit, right? You'd have Did a you guy- feel bad or no? Fuck no. To give a solitary fuck. What about those casinos where you exploit people with a gambling addiction, which is an actual health condition according to the Mayo Clinic? Look at your real world course, where you teach men to become the monster that you are. This was mainly directed at Andrew Tate, but this message applies to all the wolves in sheep's clothing who claim to help men, but actually just want to make money off of them. I say to all of you, red pillar or not, follow God. Follow what Jesus teaches us. Follow the wisdom found in the Bible. Follow the Holy Spirit's guidance. Follow God's one holy Catholic and apostolic church. As we reach the end of this video, I just want to pray for you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Lord, bless the person on the other side of this screen with wisdom and love for others. Bless this person with the Holy Spirit and allow them to find you. Whether they see this prayer or not, I want you to help them come to the way, the truth, and life found in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be, world without end. Amen.